again and welcome to Match Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. All right. And I am <laughs> Carla Garrick today. <laughs> I, I, I got to get, start getting used it's to the Garrick thing. It's a mouthful. It is. Well, and in and, and my, le- yeah. Yeah. I, I, I notice when I'm writing, I put Garthwaite. But when I say it, like if I say, oh, hi, I'm Tammy Simmons. Well, because I've been saying that forever. Right. You know, so. Yeah. I'm trying to force it in there. I'm I know. Get... It's it's difficult. People don't realize how hard it is. Like, mm-hmm. when you change your name, it's just like, yep. it's it's a real identity yeah. change. Well, it's you just, know, it's, it's just habit. I mean, it yeah, literally exactly. is just, I, yeah. I find myself, after I've said it, there was something that I did the other day, and in writing, I did it one way, but in p- verb, I did it another way, and then I was like, oh, that's so weird that I didn't even... Are we doing just half words now? Yeah. In verb? In verb. When she was verbal. Oh, no, where she Whatever. was verb. Yes, I'm half verbing. <laughs> um, so, uh, filing period ended last... Oh, I don't know if you have any other light stories before. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the crazy land. No, I mean, I guess uh, we both filed yes. so we can let folks back home know. Okay. I'm running for state house this time as opposed to state yep. senate. Only in Ward 11. Yep. I think it's entirely winnable. Yep. If you want me to come to, I don't know, a meetup, a barbecue, yep. you know, the Alpine Club, <laughs> whatever. the VWF, <laughs> whatever you want... Reach out, Carla at CarlaGarrick.com. I would love to come meet you guys. I think I'm going to make a real difference in the house, and I am excited to get there. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's reachable. You know, like well, one of the it, things with the Senate race that was always so hard. frustrating is it was such a stretch, well, I mean, right? And we both can admit, we both know, we've looked at the numbers numerous times, um, even prior to the redistricting, it was always a hurdle to get past Lou D'Alessandro's name recognition. That's just the reality. Well, yeah, it's I mean, the, he's been around for you know 50, 60 years. But come on, I've been in the state what thirteen years. Yep. I'm like, I'm gonna smoke Lou one day when so, I'm eighty three. Yeah. Y'all gonna know well, my name too. Well, so. that's what I mean. Like, uh, he just has that um, back. You know, people say, oh, he coached my son or he taught my kid. You know, and it's well, hard and he to switch from that. Republican to Democrat. Mm-hmm. People, I mean, he's a likable guy. Yeah. It's just go check his voting yeah, record his voting because record it ain't that great. Um, uh, Rich Gerard actually stepped up, but you know, with the redistricting, I think that's, that's like, important that district to is, look at. That district's it went, really, really, really. Democrat I mean, it went now. from Dem plus seven to like Dem plus twenty. Yeah. And actually, I did crunch the numbers before I made the final decision. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm goal oriented. Yeah. So, like, I, I actually thought I could take them. And honestly, yeah. you know, if, if, if I'd gotten maybe a little more financial support from the establishment. I think I yeah. could have taken him, but you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm only willing yeah, to, to do well, so they, much. Dan uh, and I had the same dilemma. We we're, um, so Dan and I are both running in Ward 10, which is now, look at me, I have to look at notes, District 19, right? So that's yeah. just Ward 10. Um, I knew that Tim Smith wasn't running, so that's an advantage for us. Um, Heidi Hamer's running as a Democrat. It, is a Democrat and Jane Bullio now. So I had I looked at the Flotarial District, which has um, now I'm doubting myself. The Flotarial District, which four probably seats. it has four seats, and it's probably um, it's less about- notable Democrats. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it might actually have been easier to beat two of them. But I looked at it this way. Um, I don't want to spend that much money and that much time to go campaigning in five wards because that is just like a Senate district. That's not what I want to do between now and November. I have, you know, I much rather engage with the people in my neighborhood yep. because those are the people I'm most familiar with. Um, I have no problem spending the next whatever months that is, five months, um, telling people exactly what Jane Bolio and Heidi Hamer vote for and what they're doing and if that's actually representing you and if you think that they will be representing you for the next two years. So I'm okay with I did, well, I made the call. I'm, it might not be the easiest race for us to win. Um, it's hard to know every election cycle is different than the next one. The votes from two years ago aren't the same as the votes for this two years. The ward lines changed. I mean, yeah, there's, there's people that there, didn't have the opportunity to vote for me in the past that might have that opportunity there's, now. There's, there's a, a lot. lot of there's a lot of flux, but I think the reality is uh, the message should resonate mm. with voters because you know we're all feeling the pain, yep. right? Like, I mean, the reality is you can talk about stuff 
and be like, oh, I stand for this or I stand for that or whatever. But, but ultimately, when you actually start paying, I don't know, five, six, seven dollars at the pump, right? Where, I mean, I'm starting to be yeah. like, hmm, I gotta think about, about where you're driving. if I'm Isn't going to Nashua after this, yeah. I was like, well, yeah. there are two other things in that area and Can I should I really like pile them in so that I'm doing like one trip, which, you know, is, is, is I like probably to, good I like anyway, to buy, but. I like to buy on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, like I like to find things. And I'm finding myself going into Merrimack on Wednesday and I'm like, at their same thing, I'm like, hmm. And I'm like, we're in Merrimack? Because I'm like, how many gallons of gas am I going to use? And like, yeah. is it worth the item I'm buying? It's just It was like, weird. Tammy, uh, she knows I want uh, vintage bird cages for seeds in the garden that I can hang from some trees. So she sent me a, uh, the one that she had found, and it was from Ossipi. And I was like, well, the bird cages are $25. That's a deal. But the gas to go get it was going to be like right? 50 bucks. So I, I ended up like, not getting it in the We're both headed end. up north for a week's vacation uh, next week. Dan and I are going from Manchester to Ossipi, Ossipi to Errol, which is where Lake Umbagag is, and oh, then wow. over to Lancaster, and then a week later, home. Um, I don't even want to know. I'm not even going to ask how much the gas <laughs> uh, costs. And also because you're pulling something. We're pulling the camper. Yeah, I mean, yeah. our truck doesn't get great. You know, it's a truck. It's, uh, you know, and, it, and and here's the thing, you know, it's it's the reality of what we have been preaching for years and years and years, which is you can't constantly live at the expense of others. Yep. There is no such thing as free stuff. You know, everyone's like, oh, I want free stuff. Well, where does that come from? I read that on average, the uh, average American household, so that mm -hmm. means like average, right? right? So it's more and less doing worse, is paying $460 a month more in groceries. And I'm like, that's, that's crazy. a lot. It is. You know? Well, I mean, I definitely notice it just in just in regular grocery store visits, because Dan and I tend to, I mean, I go and I buy big grocery, you know, regular groceries. I never have the like two cart thing or anything. There's only two of us, but I do tend to go to the grocery store quite frequently. That's just how we, that's just us. Like I'll go, I'll pick up something for dinner and these three things. Right. And in the past, it used to be you'd go and pick up those couple things and it would be $30. Now it seems like every time I go to Mark Basket, I, f I spend at least $50 and it's not because I'm buying more. It's just, and I always, when it, the total comes up, I always glance because in the past it used to be, well, did I buy beer? Because that throws it off. Or did right. I buy a lot of meat? Cause that'll throw it off. Right. And you look and you're like, huh, I got no alcohol <laughs> and one, one meal. Great. So I recently learned that one of the reasons there are different cuts of meat mm. for steak is it was one of the ways that they kind of roundabouted the data back in the 80s, I guess. So the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, used to have a basket of goods. And then they've been sort of fudging those numbers over time, right, to try and show you that, oh, inflation isn't so bad or whatever. They're just lying to you. And, you know, with economics and uh, statistics, it's fairly easy because maybe people aren't as knowledgeable about it as they should be, actually. Like, we should all know yeah. how this stuff works because it really influences, like, your constant day-to-day -day yep, yep. life, right? And so apparently the original CPI had some, I, I forget what it was, let's say it was like ribeye steak or filet mignon or yeah. whatever it was, right? And then uh, and then they were like, oh, we got to doctor this number. So they kept like introducing a new cut of, of, meat, of into meat into that category. Into that category. So trust no one, as I like to say. Um, trust but verify. So I did bring <laughs> the list of the people who filed for office, but before we say that, get there. And I think I said this last two weeks ago or whatever, but I just want to remind people that um, the... Revenue surplus for the state for the month of May was grew. The surplus grew by 24 million, which is 21% over what was projected in the Republican budget. Um, that said, the state has taken in 406 million more than the estimate in the two year state budget that was signed last June. Uh, 2.7 billion in total revenue received so far is 250 million more than what came in during the same 11 months ending in May 2021. Um, they're expecting that by the end of June, the um, 
rainy day fund will have more than $450 million. And I want to very clearly remind people that that is because of Republican legislation. I can guarantee or fairly guarantee that none of the incumbent Democrats that I'm going to mention voted for the budget that is yielding this $450 million um, surplus. It is the Republicans that managed to lower taxes. They lowered the rooms and meals tax. They've lowered um, business taxes. They're phasing out the interest and dividends mm -hmm. tax. They're doing all these things. They still are providing all the funds. Manchester got way more money this year for schools than they had in the past. And there's still $450 million set aside for when we need it. And actually there was tax, property tax relief in from the, the state yes. level that I see the Dems just on they Twitter just are like totally like, just spend it. lying about it. Well, because the, the state sent, sent back, they reduced um, the state education tax rate so that communities would be paying less. But the difference is some communities said, hey, look, that's money for the taxpayers. Oh, no, no, not in Manchester. In Manchester, they're just going to spend it. They spend every penny they can and more. They don't ever cut back. They don't ever give it back to the taxpayers. That said, okay, so new district numbers, not that that matters. New flotarial districts in Manchester. Um, I thought we could just go and go through the wards and whatnot to give people a list of, you know, who's running. So these are not in... Um, ward number order for who knows what bizarre reason. <laughs> so it's going to be in a haphazard order because this is the order they come in districts. District 15 is Ward 8. Uh, currently, uh, Mark Warden and isn't that terrible? Mark, Mark Warden. Mark McClain. No, Mark's no. in the flame. Anyways, oh, okay. uh, Mark Warden is an incumbent there and is not running um, heard, for re-election. Yeah. So on the Republican side, Mark McLean has moved over from the Flotero to run just in his home ward of Ward 8. And Mark Pru, who served there in the past, is also running as on the Republican side. Nice. On the Democrat side, now there is still today for parties to fill vacancies, so this could change slightly. Um, Brandon LeMay. Sounds semi-familiar, but not, not anything I would. Um, barring barring um, a bizarre turn in events. And I don't even know what that could be. I'm going to go with it. Oh, is my God. I think a... Tevi just cursed us no, all. No, I'm just saying. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go. Wood. My gut says we're going to be more Republican leaning than Democrat leaning. Oh, I mean, honestly. Um, the, the... But I'm not going to be overly confident in that concept. So in that case. I mean, I, I read an article on Politico that said it's going to be a blast. They say that, but I, I, it, local elections, I never believe it. So That's anyways, too. in that ward, I would expect that Mark McLean and Mark Prue would both be successful. Um, District. 16 is Ward 6, very Republican ward. Um, on the Republican side, two incumbents, Larry Gagne and Will Infantine are running. On the Democrat side, Maxine Mosley, which I know her name but really don't know her. I n believe she might be involved in education somehow. And Holly Hillhouse. Uh, Maxine might give them a little run for their money, but I would expect that Larry and Will will both succeed in Ward 6. Ward se or District 17 is Ward 2. Um, this is one of those places where you never know how it's going to really go. Even though it's a more Democrat-leaning ward, I'm not convinced that that always has to be the case. On the Republican side, Tyler Chase has put his name in again. And Lee Xavier Davis, have no idea who that is, is the other Republican. On the Democrat side, Linda De Silvestro, definitely an incumbent. John David Priest, I think might be an incumbent, not really sure. Um, it's possible that that's a split 1R1D, one, one one but who knows? It's a tough ward. Uh, District 18 is Ward 12. Dick Marston, incumbent running. Matt Whit Whitlock, who put his name in two years ago, also running. Those are your two Republicans. On the Democrat side, Jessica Grill and Juliet Smith. Um, new names to, to the best of my knowledge. I would presume at least one. Rep I would presume Dick Marston would definitely prevail there and uh, depends on the work and of course it's up to you guys because yeah. you got to come out no, and that's vote. what I mean it's all, you know I'm just going by my 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 general gut okay district 19 is ward 10 that's my ward Dan and I are both running as the Republicans Jane Bolio and Heidi Hamer are running as, as Democrats um realistically it could split and a really good Republican year you're going to see two Garth Waits up in the state house. <laughs> um 
but I think we should be able to get one. We'll see. Um, District 20 is Ward 9. On the Republican side, uh, Robert Kliske, he's run in the past, and Pierre Dupont, who I do not feel I know, on the Republican side. On the de Democrat side, they have a primary. Candace Moulton, um, who's kind of nuts. Uh, Alessandra Murray, don't know, and Joshua Query, who is the incumbent. Um, that's a tough ward, too. Uh, I'm not even going to venture to guess. Uh, District 21 is Ward 1, also a tough ward for Republicans. On the Republican side, you have the father-son team of Andrew and Gus Frommuth, oh, wow. which will be interesting because Andrew Frommuth was on the ballot two years ago, yep. and Gus is longtime um, old-school Republican. Oh, nice. So he's going to bring in a different group of voters probably from the North End than the Democrats are used to having to deal with. Um, on the Democrat side, where the heck did they? They have a primary there, too. I don't know what's up with the Democrat primaries. Uh, Jeff Goley, Diane Langley, and Christine Siebert. Um, I don't know which one, Langley or Siebert, will survive the primary. Um, I would think it's very possible for one Dem, one Republican to come out of that ward. Uh, District 22, Ward 11. That's my ward. Uh, Carla Garrick and Brittany Ping both put mm -hmm. their names in. Carla's got very broad name recognition from her Senate races. Brittany has been on the ballot a few times, so you both have very good name recognition there on the- And she's fun to door knock she with. We awesome just go door. and the yep. little kids, and we yep. do little freestyle um, kid door knocking, the take the puppy. It's Democrats great. also have a primary. Uh, Patricia Cornell, who's the incumbent, incumbent, their other incumbent, and I can never remember his name. He, Funny, I think he filed for office on living in the seacoast, almost as if he never lived in Ward 11 at all. Mm. Um, Nicole Leapley, who is on the school board, uh, you might remember her name recently. She's been whining because she has to pay more for her health insurance since she took the position as a school committee member, because um, now she's not getting her $10,000 in free health care subsidy from you and I. Um, and Sarah Lachance, I'm not very familiar with Sarah. Um, Nice French name. We'll see how that goes. Um, again, I would think that that should at least split. I should think. I should think. Um, I mean, and honestly, you know, because I sort of have a, a particular flavor of my platform. I mean, I'm very socially, hmm. you know. Right. You're not a tip, uh, right. I, you know, know, and so I kind of feel like there are a lot of Dems who might actually find my my race quite attractive yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, like I'm fiscally conservative, but socially fairly, yeah. you know, yeah. relaxed about stuff. And, you know, I think the, the drug war was an abject failure and we could do better. <laughs> um, District 23 is Ward 3. The Republicans didn't field anybody as of yesterday, as of this morning. Um, John Judy and Pat Where's Long, Ward three? Ward three. Oh wow! They're both incumbents, so I'm just going to presume that the Dem that the Dems will maintain those two seats in Ward three. District twenty four is Ward four. Uh, Chris Herbert, you know the one who wanted mm -hmm. to tax old people out of their homes oh, and yeah. all that stuff. And Don Bouchard, I think they're both incumbents, and I don't know if Herbert's an incumbent now, but he has in the past. Um, Though, that's the Democrats on the Republican side. Richard Hagala, who had his name in two, two years ago as well, and Gene Matthew. Um, Gene and Steve are wonderful people. Uh, they own Legacy Financial and whatnot, and uh, Gene's put her name in again. So um, I think it's possible that that's a split also, which is good. Uh, District 25 is Ward 5. The Boldens, Amanda and Andrew Bolden, are running for re-election there. And Scott Mattiello. Don't know him, have seen his name, but don't know him on the Republican side. Uh, District 26 is Ward 7. Brian Cole on the Republican side will put his name in. Ross Terrio opted to run for Senate. Um, on the Democrat side, they've got Mary Freitas, who will probably, even though she's like 3,000 years old, probably win re-election because everybody knows her. And there's a newcomer, Tiffany Forsing. So that's you know, interesting. I'm so curious about the notion of incumbents, right? Because... Clearly, things aren't moving in the right direction. But I don't think voters pay atten that close they attention. They don't care? No. Or... Well, it's not that they don't care. I just don't think the average voter really... It's just business as usual, and they're like, just... oh, I know that yeah, name. I really and... do. There's a there's a large slice of voters that I don't think have... I mean, there's 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 the voters who are one party or the other. You know, right. there's the, they're always going to vote Republican. They would vote for any Republican. They come out to the primary. Right. There's the Democrats. Hard, yeah. They would never vote for a Republican. You know, like those, right. there's that pocket. Then there's the ones who kind of follow their party, 
you know, for the most part. But then sometimes that changes because of who they know. Right. So they might know Lou D'Alessandro. Right. They might not know anything about what he stands for, but they know him. So you've got people like that. And then you've got the people who are actually trying to figure out who they're supposed to vote for. You know, like actually asking questions right. and looking. And you you get that. So it's hard. And that's um, within the parties. And then, of course, the largest group of voters in New Hampshire are actually the undeclared yep. or the independents. Yep. And that is by far the biggest pool of voters. Um, and they and get I don't even think that mo the majority. I mean, I think if you look at the pool of undeclared voters, there's, again, there's a large slice on both ends that there's nothing undeclared. They just choose to run as undeclared so they can vote in whichever primary they want. They 100%, this group 100% votes Republican, this group 100% votes Democrat, and then there's the ones in the middle. There's always that group mm -hmm. in the middle. Um, so in the Floatarials, the new District 39 is wards 6, 8, and 9. Um, Ross Berry, who's the incumbent, is running on the Republican side, as well as Kirk McConville, who's run in Ward 6 in the past. Um, on the Democrat side, you've got Brian Bagley and Ben Baruti. I'm actually kind of surprised that Ben Baruti put his name into this particular race because I think it's harder for a Democrat to win in this floatarial than it would be for Ben to have. Well, I guess he can't win in Ward 6 either. So, okay, <laughs> never mind. So that could go either way. It should go to two Republicans. I would say it could split. Ben could pick up that second seat. It really depends. District 40 is now Wards 1, 3, and the entire West Side. So five mm. wards. There's four seats there. On the Republican side, there is a primary. Jamie Brazil. John Frazier, Carlos Gonzalez, Marav Yakov, and Sylvain Yakov. So those five will wean down to four. And on the Democrat side, we have Damon Ford, Mark McKenzie, who's served in the past, and he's the former AFL-CIO president, Matthew, P Matthew Ping, who's run in the past, Trinidad Tellez, I don't know, and Matt Wilhelm, who is in Ward 1? I can't even keep track. He was in some <laughs> other districts. So they've got a, both sides have a primary. So that'll be a busy thing for that district. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and then the last district is District 41, which is wards two, four, five, and seven. On the Republican side, you've got Jola Chance, who's served in the past, and Steve Matthew, who's run in the past. Again, Gene and Steve own Legacy Financial. So they both have good chances. There's one empty slot there. Don't know if it'll get filled. On the Democrat side, Amy Bradley. Jacqueline Cretien, Mary Heath, Mary Smith, and Rebecca Robin Thompson. So they've got a five-way run for three seats. Um, I thought I heard Mary Heath wasn't running. It's funny they brought out the old guns. Um, <laughs> just funny. Um, so that's what you got looking at. Um, I'm sure after we get back from vacation, because Carla and I will not be taping next week, um, when we get back, we'll probably start having some more in-depth. Like for myself personally, I have any, I'm not even touching my any more campaign stuff until I get back. I just, you know, vacation's important. We all, we only live once and I'm going to enjoy my week off. And um, when I get back, I'll update my website and order my new signs and order, you know, do all the things and plan out what we're going to yeah, do for the next five months. There's a surprising amount of rigmarole. I was like, oh no, all my stuff actually says state senate. Yeah. So I was like, eh, I'm going to have to tweak some, I have some of ideas it, I'll tell you before you know. we go home today. Yeah. Um, so that's what's going on with the, the state elections. On the Senate side, um, there's three districts in Manchester now. There's the one that's held by Donna Soucy, um, Democrat. That um, There's two candidates running. George Lambert and Ross Terrio are running for that on the Republican side. So there'll be a primary there. Oh, interesting. There's uh, the North, the one that Kevin Kavanaugh had um, that was or is a current senator and has been shifted around. So there'll be a Republican primary between Michael Yakubovich, who I'm supporting, and um, Barbara Griffin from Goffstown. Um, Kevin, uh, Kevin Kavanaugh opted to run against Ted Gatsis for executive counsel instead. And um, I forget who they're running on the Democrat side, to be honest. Um, and then there's this district with Lou in it now that has Rich Gerard running against it. So, you know, well, the Republicans will take the seat that's currently held by Kevin Kavanaugh, and I would imagine, well, I don't know. I would imagine Lou will beat Rich Gerard, and I guess Donna Susie's district is, you know, always up for grab, but we'll see. Yeah. It's, I always focus on the House. It's hard. The Senate races are tough. And, of course, you know, uh, the primary will be in September, so, you know, there were some primaries. It sounded like they were mostly on the Dem yeah. side anyway. 
Uh, but for the most part, I've just found that voters don't really care no. until like, you know, uh, the two weeks before the election. Yep. Yep. So I think taking some time yep. off, getting our ducks in a row, yep. all of that makes perfect sense. Yep. And honestly, like when I was talking to my husband, Louie, and I was like, you know, I'm not sure what I should do. Should I do this? Should I do this? And we were kind of talking through all the scenarios. And eventually I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to make it easy on myself. Yep. I have 40 million things on my plate, yep. literally. Not literally, but you know what I mean, figuratively, Figurative. literally. Um, and and so I was talking to him and he goes, so just war, he goes, just our neighborhood? Yeah. Like we just, just our neighborhood? Well, and, and he was so psyched. He was like, oh, we could put signs on yeah. every corner, you know? Well, and, and I like the idea that the one thing I always say, every campaign cycle, as much as I'd rather not have to go out and camp, I love it. We talked to, we have made so many good bonding friendships it, with the people in our ward. I mean, Dan and I just made new na new friends down around the corner from our house a week or so ago when we were walking Jenny. You know, I love talking to people. I love finding out why they are why they do the things they do. I love seeing people's gardens. I love seeing what they're doing with their houses, hearing what's going on in their life. So I would much rather spend my next few months talking to those same people rather than having to spread myself thin and try to go up in ward one and, you know, Ward three and all across the west side. I, I'm just focused just on my little neighborhood. Yeah, and so we have a Manchester Republican Committee meeting I tomorrow. I don't know. There's a meeting uh, Wednesday night, but. Um, um, and so for folks who are watching who maybe want to get involved, maybe you like what we're doing, maybe you want to come help on campaigns. Of course, everyone's always accepting donations. Uh, if you give it directly to the mm -hmm. candidates you like, that uh, helps them more directly. But, you know, yeah. we. We, we, we're here, we're running, we're yep. excited. Uh, what is it, manchtalk at gmail.com? Manchtalk at gmail.com. You can email us if you have any questions. If there's a candidate that you'd like to see us have on the show that maybe Carla and I might not, you know, have, have handpicked to come on, send us a message. That's the only way we know what you want to hear. And I'd be happy to debate anyone on anything. There you go. Okay, <laughs> that's all we got. Um, we won't be here next week, so enjoy. Um, it's supposed to be beautiful this week. Hopefully it'll be beautiful here in Manchester next week, and then we'll see you the week after that. Have a great time. Bye. Take care.